How's it guys? This is video number one in a whole series of training videos that I'm busy making. And this video we're going to describe exactly why pumps actually work. What makes water flow into a pump? Why does it leave the pump? We know that you have a motor, the motor's turning, but what's actually happening in the pump that makes the water move from the water tank and out of the pump to wherever you want to pump it. So to explain this as simply as I can, we need to start with the actual fundamentals of hydraulics. And what's actually happening in all around you, atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure, when you alter it, you get things to move. And what I mean by that is, why does wind get created? How do we create wind? Why do, you, why do we have wind in the mornings and wind in the late afternoons and you get bird winds and offshore breezes? And What's creating all of that? It's the changes in atmospheric pressure between one area and another. And what you'll find is, and this is fact, is that air and water will move from a high pressure to a low pressure. So if you want to move something, create a low pressure zone and the atmosphere will assist you in actually moving water from one place to another. Right, so I'll explain it to you this way. This is a glass of water with a straw and the atmosphere or atmospheric pressure is acting equally on the entire surface of this water, including the water that's in the straw. This is why if you had to pull the straw out, the water level would stay there because the pressure inside the straw is no different to the pressure that's inside the top of the glass. So what happens now, to get this water to move out the straw in your mouth, you actually create a low pressure zone without actually thinking about it. Um, you actually suck the air that's in your mouth and by expanding your lungs slightly and your esophagus and all the rest of it, you just create that slight expansion which allows this air to move inside and create a vacuum at the top of the straw. Now that vacuum gets equalized all the way down the straw here and atmosphere is what actually pushes the water up the straw. Okay? Hence you get movement of water. Now this concept and this principle is absolutely no different to what's actually happening inside of the pellet. So once you've primed the whole pump, and I'll draw a pump for you now and I'll show you fundamentally what I mean by that. But what actually happens is this impeller, by the way, will turn this way. Why? Because you would fling water off the, the veins of the impeller. These are the veins. Okay? If you turned it in the opposite direction, if this impeller was turning this way, you'd actually be scooping water rather than flinging water. It's the same concept as taking a bucket of water off a full bucket of water and swing it around your head. That's centrifugal force. Hence, this is called the centrifugal pump. The water doesn't come out of the bucket. Why? Because the motion that you're creating is actually trying to force the water away. And it's exactly what happens inside the impeller. But because this impeller was primed, completely filled with water, no air, the minute you move that water away, what are you doing behind it? At the eye of the impeller, you're actually creating a vacuum, a low pressure zone. And if we draw, a, a pump quickly, I'll show you in principle what's actually happening. So, this is our pump, there's the foot piece, this is the whole body and the outlet, and the impeller is sitting inside here, goes your motor. Okay, we'll just draw this one. So, this is your impeller. So, by throwing the water out, in that direction, you're creating a low pressure zone here. And remember, this is where your pipe work is attached. So at the eye of the impeller, here is where you are creating the low pressure zone. And that's what forces the water to move in that direction. Plain and simple. A vacuum cleaner does exactly the same thing. A vacuum cleaner's got a, um, what they call an impeller. Um, it would spin, throw the air away, Create a vacuum in the eye, and that's what that eye is facing the suction hose of your of your vacuum cleaner, and that's why the thing sucks air. There's no such thing as sucking action, unless you're talking about prostitutes, but the concept of sucking doesn't actually exist. It's the differential between a high and a low pressure zone that makes something move in one or another direction. It's as simple as that. And that's exactly what's taking place in here. 
and creating the high pressure zone that allows this water then to climb up a hill, along a pipe, overcome friction, whatever the case is. But the low pressure zone here, this zone here, is why the water can come into the pump and it could be able to suck over a certain distance. And let me tell you, um, I'll explain this in depth in, in the next video, but what's actually happening here is you have a correlation between I'm busy drawing a, a coastal scenery for you with mountains in the background, just by the way. Here's the ocean. Okay. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is higher than at the top of Mount Everest. Okay. And because of that, your pump's ability to lift water, create a vacuum, is less the higher you are above sea level. I'll explain that in a different way. But just so you understand the concept, you are limited on any centrifugal pump, on any pump for that matter, as to how high you can actually lift water from one surface into the pump. This is why people build pump stations rather with a tank of water and what we call a positive head of water. So we'd rather the water gets a positive suction into the pump rather than trying to suck out of a, a well or a river. The limitations are here, yeah, the levels that you can actually pump. And that I'll explain in a different video. Okay, the reason why I'm explaining all this to you, besides the fact that you now know how our pump works and why our pump works and why our vacuum cleaner works and why there are things like prostitutes, um, without this low pressure zone creation, water would not move. It cannot. And the centrifugal force that is being created by the spinning of this impeller is what actually moves the water away. That dispelling of water creates the low, low pressure zone in the eye of the impeller, and that's what sucks you. Now, I lost the train of thought there for a second. If you have a leak, yeah, if you have a hole in your pipe, if you have a leaking mechanical seal, let's assume your mechanical seal sitting on the shaft here, and that introduces air. All these holes will collapse the vacuum. That's why when you have leaking suctions, and 90% of pump installation failures are created on the suction. 30 years of experience, I've learned this. Everybody I know has been in this game for any length of time, when we sit and discuss what's happened on a pump installation, why did something fail, if you get asked to go and consult at a site and you walk onto a premises, you look at an installation, trust me, anybody with experience, the first thing you would look at is what's going on on the suction side of this pump. Is there a restricted valve? Is there a hole in the pipe? Is there a leaking mechanical seal? Is the tank of water actually running dry? Has the water level from the river dropped to a point where it exceeds the MPSH ability of the pump? Suction problems. And as long as everything is intact, no leaks whatsoever, not even the smallest little leak, it must be completely intact. So the reason I'm telling you this, you want to go and assess why our pump's not working on site, first thing you're going to look at, it. look at the suction. Guarantee you, you'll probably find a problem there. Unless, of course, the impellers come apart, the motor's shot, it's not working, the pump is running in the wrong direction if it's a three phase, or power supply utility might have swapped phases on three phase, now the pump's running backwards. It'll still pump, but it'll only pump at about a third of the pressure that it normally would. So, fundamentals suction has to be intact, mechanical seal has to be intact, land backing on a pump has to be intact. You cannot have any leaks on your suction. Why? Because the minute you collapse that vacuum, you take away the pump's ability to actually move water into the impeller so that it can be installed. Simple as that. Thanks for watching.